All right, here's the next morning and Jean, John's gonna ride the Coast Starlight train number 10 north to Portland. That's right. Leaving in, I think, the afternoon. Or no, it's a morning, it's a morning departure. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's an all day ride. It's an all day ride, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a double car. So this is a double level dome. You can see out the windows from the lower level as well as the upper level, more human interest. That lady on the right's giving you the evil eye, John. I don't know. She wonders why you're taking a picture. Why can't I? Well, you can't. Here we see the reservoir north of- uh, Well, I, I complained to one lady reading a newspaper there. John was upset with somebody reading a newspaper in the dome <laughs> car and not enjoying the view. So he spoke out. Oh, well. I the, upset. <laughs> yeah, you did. I, you couldn't <laughs> control yourself, could you? Now, this shot shows a real low reservoir. This was the one that the SP had to raise the track level to get above a little higher because their original route would have been underwater. And I just read today or yesterday uh, somewhere that the reservoir is at a 70 year low in California. That's not good. Hope they get some rain. They go there and piss in the rain. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that, John. Okay. Please. Okay. Your mom's watching the show. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Remember that from heaven. That's right. You're right. right. You're right. All right. Now, there is a bridge, or would have been a bridge in the foreground, I think, here. Uh, the SP's alignment, I think, went over right through here. I tried to find a now picture of this that I have, but I couldn't. At any rate, we move along here up the coast, uh, up the Shasta line, and just some reefer stored that I like this picture I put it in. Uh-oh, the yawn. The train will put you to sleep. We're crossing, getting ready across you know, Mount Shasta here, uh -huh. up Sacramento River on the right. Yeah. Yeah, there's your consist. By the way, by this time in 1957, SP wasn't so concerned about having a matched consist. A year before, they would have, but... In this contest, right behind the power, you see a mismatched colored uh, coach. You'll see a better picture later. But that was kind of new at the time of the trend that was starting to, to happen. Looking down at Cantera Loop here, going over your top of yourself if you're a freight train here. We did the same thing in the Trains Unlimited trip that we rode together in back in, what was it, 2011 or somewhere back then? Yeah. I can't remember what we year wrote it was. the train. Twenty four, maybe it's twenty. We, we were we were in the in the compartment or something. Where we were. Right, but I remember we had the same view, Cantera Loop. Yeah. yeah, and SP had a real bad derailment there. Then uh, the bridge down there and the river has been modified since then. So we're north of Mount Shasta now, and uh, uh, in the kind of high desert country here. Yeah, and here we are at Kalamath Falls getting a service stop. So we're just into Oregon. John jumps off the train. There's time to do that and gets a couple of pictures. He's even got time to walk up to the front of the train. That's right. There's a Woody on the right, John. Look at those windows, right? Uh, yeah. How big they are. Right? I know. You, know, you had not need a dome car. You're looking at the window. I know. Well, it was a daylight, John. That's right. And that was the front end. You see the mismatched car in the consist back there? So he yeah. just missed it by one of having a mismatched consist, but oh well, what are you going to do? Take what you get. That's right. Well, we made it to Portland, right, John? We did. You did. And this is the next morning. I like that. NW2. Well, the, the uh, Shasta Daylight gets into Portland about 10 o'clock at night. So you stayed at another YMCA probably, right? I would guess so. Yeah, yeah, and then you got out the next morning, and you're near the depot or the, San, yeah. the Portland depot. Yeah. And this nifty little UP train comes by with matched consist. Talking <laughs> about matched consist. See, the UP knows how to do it. Absolutely. They do. And here they are again. And once again, we don't know what train this is because no number boards have been put into the front yet. But Well, they weren't, they weren't ready to go out yet. Well, they're going to shift it around, yeah. Here's one that is arriving or is getting ready to leave. I, I'd say leave because he's eastbound at Portland and it's number 12. I rode the Pioneer out of Portland on the UP back in 1980, and it was a great ride. So I'm assuming that this is where they're headed. I don't know what 2012 went, train 12, but some SP and S power. Where is this guy coming from? Do you know? He's on my train. He's on my train tomorrow. He's on your Even train. We're going to go north. Well, I'm going to ride the train. You're going to ride the train that's pulled by this power. And that one E7 at one time. 
Okay, but I've got a question for you. You're going to go to Tacoma behind this power? I guess so, because I got to go up. So, so steam engines there. Yeah. I don't know if I was intending to do it. Or not, I, I don't know. But there's steam engines there. Well, I might have conflicting information. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see when we get to it. We'll, don't worry about it. Okay. So there was a diversion in Portland. John wanted to see really bad. The Portland Traction Company. I think John rode the line north over the river from downtown up to where the airport would be by that NE mark up there now. I don't know that fact, but we're going to look at some scenes out the back window. We'll move through these. I'm not, I'm not too fast, but we're going to move through them because time is getting late. Yeah, because I'll scream up you. All right. So now here, I'm going to run these in reverse order because this is really neat how you look at the people here. A little work ding on the side. Here we are coming through Portland downtown. Pre-Max. There's no Max in Portland at this time. No what? No Max. Remember the Max in 2004 when we were there at the convention? The Portland Max? That's how the light rail there now is called Max. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So here we see some scenes along the way. Working. John's train has just cleared the site, so they're back at work. Notice the roses on the right in Portland, the Rose City. They got the perfect climate for roses there. More, more <clears throat> looks like we're getting out away from the city more. John has just cleared this intersection and he now the signal on the pole shows a red for the railroad to, to go through that intersection apparently, but mm. he's going away from it. The traffic has a green, you can see that. Mm. I don't know what kind of signal this is, but that's a really interesting signal. It, I, don't, yeah. I don't know who these guys are, but they were watching you go by. Ooh. Those gentlemen. There's a passing sighting that just came through. Okay. Some neighborhoods. Uh-huh. Right by your house. Step out of your house, get on the train. Huh? Just talking about close houses to oh, the track. Yeah. yeah. Here we are at a terminal. I'm not sure if this was the away terminal or downtown. Probably downtown. Uh -huh. Yeah, with a big bridge. Yeah. Because I ran them in reverse. So this is where he actually would have started, but I wanted to show the trip first. Here is uh, here's car 4012. A couple more shots of these. And one from above as John has walked up that walkway and gone up above. By the way, that telephone booth, little did John know that, that would be gone in 19 or in 2022 as well. Oh. Uh, P Port Attraction had a little power of their own. But, uh, you know, notice the trolley wire on him. He could go to the wire and get his power. Right, John? What time? He's got the trolley on him, top of it. He can take power off the wire. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Wooden cabooses. Uh, that's equipment, though. Here's another reason to scan Kodachrome slides and then work on them in Photoshop, because they can look great on cloudy days, too. The color can be as vibrant as ever. Here's just some, a light crane. They wouldn't use a crane like that nowadays. I think they would just use a high rail with a, a bucket or something, you know, or some yeah. kind of. All right. What's that one? Well, just watch. We're presenting these images in the memory of our friend Jim Went Rim, who passed away. Jim, aka Shea. And this is the Shea that was at Portland at the logging center there. And uh, I said, John, let's put these in the show. Jim would approve. So that's for Shea. Shea, uh -huh. God bless you, man. And I have a few other pictures of John, uh, Jim that I'd like to include just real quick. Jim, the journalist. Now, this is not a steno pad in his hand. Actually, it looks like a wallet. I think he's maybe reaching for some money to give Henry. I don't know. But anyway, Mr. Uh, uh, Henry, what's his last name with Iowa Interstate? Uh, Henry, I can't. Posner. Posner, yeah. Posner. Thank you, John. Yeah. That was at North Star Siding in Iowa back in 2011. And Jim is covering the day that the Iowa Interstate set the record for tonnage hauled by a steam engine in the new millennium. Oh. And uh, 
I ran into him there, as did a lot of people. The people in the Captain America outfits are bike riders with the 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 uh, what's that Bray or the the Iowa ride they do every summer. Oh yeah, um, I don't know. across the state. Yeah. I was, oh yeah, yeah, I, know I can't one. think of the name of it. It starts with a B. Yeah. But uh, Jim, covering the story, that's our friend Tammy in the middle in the background there. Uh -huh. Tammy McNair. It might be the Chiefs read the pickup back there too. I don't know. Uh -huh. But Jim doing his thing. And here he is with his stemo pad at uh, the unveiling of the, the Heritage Fleet. You see him right here. There's Andy Fletcher. There's Wick Mormon. Uh -huh. And uh, Jim's taking notes. Uh -huh. He's working. Once, once again, working. You see him taking notes in that picture. Yeah. Yeah, we're all going to miss Jim. What a great guy. Even if you didn't know him, like I didn't know him very, I just only knew him casually, but what a great guy. He was always good. John's leaving Portland and he's going to ride the Great Northern, John. I don't know that train of tomorrow that you were talking about. Something's amiss because this is a Portland shot and you're on it. And well, I rode the train of tomorrow. Okay. Somewhere. Uh, and you did. Yeah. It, one of those places. I rode it to Tacoma, I think, way. Okay. Yeah. Well, I take your word for it, but here you are. It says you're in Portland here, and you're, uh, you might be right, because I don't know that the Great Northern actually went into Portland, in fact. That's, that, that's making me doubt that this picture is you. This might be in you leaving Seattle. Well, there was a train that came when the Emperor built the land. I, I spoke to it, it split up a train. Some of it went to Portland. Okay, I just don't know, because I know that the... The hill lines never got into Portland. That was the, the territory that SP would not let them get past. So that's a subject for further debate. We'll just look at these pictures. Uh -huh. We think he's leaving Portland, but it might be Seattle. Anyway, take a look. Oh, darn it. Oh, yeah, nice. Puget Sound. But don't forget, leaving both Portland and Seattle, you see Puget Sound on your left uh, if you're going to Great Northern. Here's a meet. Yeah, yeah. I, I might have these out of order, but we'll assume that we'll, we'll use these to illustrate that he's riding up to uh, to uh, Seattle. Well, we're going to Tacoma. First. Well, you're going to get off the train at Tacoma. We got a steam engine on it there. Right. Take a quick look at the north, the uh, northern Pacific, and you can see that Tacoma was their center of operations for shifting and switching out there. And John did get off the train and decided to wander around and find his way up to Seattle later on. But meanwhile, there was business to be had. Yeah. Now you see the crewmen getting the 24, 25 ready to move. Uh -huh. and now they're moving. Yeah. This, this, you know, several shots of this train is actually under steam and moving. These, these are not under steam, I don't believe, John. But they're all circled at the roundhouse. Yeah. You see the cap on that steam that's got the smoke deflector? Yeah. It's opened up so it goes straight up, but it would be for tunnels, right? Or what would that be for? Wait, wait, wait. That the, thing there? That thing right there. Where um, am I looking? We're looking right there at that. What is that used for? Deflect smoke, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's just. Maybe in the roundhouse or somewhere. I don't know. Maybe somebody can tell us later. I don't know. Oh, well. Here's the big hook. Once again, we think these are around Tacoma. I labeled them as such. We know these are in Seattle. Here he is in Seattle. Here's our greeting in Seattle. So you took a bus or some other way to get up to Seattle once you got your shots done. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's late in the afternoon. A good train probably that lot of trains running. A lot of trains were running. This yeah. is downtown Seattle. If you remember the earthquake pictures from 1964, these were the streets that the old greeny black and whites were taken of the streets all broken up and the cars halfway down in the crevices of the Alaskan earthquake that affected Seattle uh -huh. quite badly. Some more scenery. Oh, that's the uh, Great Northern Trade. I mean, right. NP Trade, the uh, going east. Yeah. So they shared the common, the King Street Depot there. Yeah. 
industry. Yeah. Now, we might be seeing a repeat of a few slides because those previous slides coming up to Coma. This is his last shot in Seattle. We're going to look at the schedule for the uh, uh, the Empire Builder, and you'll want to read uh, read down. I'm sorry, read up from the right there in the bottom right. He's leaving in the afternoon, uh, right after lunch, it looks like, or after about two o'clock uh -huh. in the afternoon. And there's your route on the High Line. Here's your power. Uh -huh. This is the power that will take his train north, and then east at Everett. Uh -huh. So I think, John, we might have used these twice, but this is actually leaving Seattle, I do believe. You might have been on the train tomorrow going to, C to Seattle. So well, we, we'll have to find I, those pictures later. I'll find them later, okay? Yeah. All right. So it's all good. Okay. We'll run through these real quick. There's two or three of them. Don't cut them down. No, no, two. No, no. We won't. There's, there's Mount St. Helens, I believe. I think so, yeah. yeah. Now we're climbing out of the, the watershed or the gas station. And early light next morning into Essex, into the Glacier Park. Yeah, that's right. Climbing, climbing, and climbing. US 2 on the right. The road you can follow all the way home across Montana and South North Dakota. Uh, Glacier Park from the dome. Yeah. About seven in the morning or 6 30. Could be. Yeah. And today's Empire Builder runs on about the same time schedule. Uh -huh. That's the Flathead River. And this is September. Pretty good amount of snow already up there. I would say so. I will be stuck up there. Yeah. Now you're coming down out of the elevation at Shelby. That uh -huh. depot looks pretty much the same today without the Great Northern logo on it. Uh -huh. There was a BN logo on it. Now I think it's probably a BNSF logo, if anything. But they, yeah. Here's a ranch car inside. It's stop, 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 not too fair. It's a nice thing. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, I had to take a picture of that. It was, I, I ate in that car. You did? Okay. Uh huh. Here you get your service stop at Haver. You got time to get off the train and take some shots. Uh, that's right. Yeah. You're watching them, right? Yeah. There's your head in. This is how we knew that power in Seattle was your power, right there. That confirmed it. 269A. So you had a 269A, B, C, and D, maybe, huh? Could be. Yeah. If they ran it matched, which they probably did. Are you pulling out of the chair right now? I'm sorry. I have to rest my elbow on your, your mattress, John. It's very hard. I ain't gone. Don't do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. What's that? You arrived in Minneapolis. Yeah. And here you are at Minneapolis, at Spud, St. Louis, St. Paul Union Depot, and Minneapolis and St. Louis Power is working there with a freight. Oh, okay. The 400 is getting ready to depart. Yeah, I guess so. So is the... North, uh, the all, morning Hiawatha. They were all gone east, yeah. This was power that was working. We believe this power was working in Minneapolis because John took a, a cab. And I think John went over to what is now the Transportation Museum. In, oh, I went over to the Great Northern State facility, right? Yeah. That's what I did. Right, right. But look at right there. I, if I'm not wrong, that is today's Minnesota Transportation Museum that we went to the there to see the Hustle Muscle back in 05 or whatever it was. The hustle Muscle? Very Northern didn't have any active steam that you could find, right? No, no, no. But the Northern Pacific was still... Oh, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I must see... Uh, I like this picture a lot. Uh, F8. That's nice, isn't it? There's a set of FTs. Uh -huh. Nice going, John. Uh -huh. Way to go. Now, there's dead steam right there, but that's beautiful steam engines. Boy, I would love to see those things go by. Me too. It's got a belt there for our box. Oh, my out. goodness. Yeah. And then the Minneapolis and St. Louis shows up again with their, what does it say, diesel electric? A uh, bud car. That's what it is. Well, I'm going to zoom in on this a little because... There's their power in Minneapolis-St. Louis power. 
and you see the Omaha Road and the facilities up there. Yeah. Well, these are the shots from around there. John's going to do one more close up of the RDC. A couple more here, and we're moving up to Duluth, the last segment of our trip here. John wants to go up to Duluth. And so he rode the train up there and he got up there. We're going to visit Proctor and we're going to be down at the docks. Yeah, that's right. So here we are at Proctor. We got quite a few. I'm going to, I'm going to move through them. Not quick, but I'm going to move through them. Okay. These What's are, that? I got to get through these here. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. I won't get nervous. You're going to go too fast. I won't do that either. I'll have to stop you a little bit. Okay. Okay. You push the button if you have to. This is Masabi uh, up at Proctor. They had big engines, right? They did. So John did a, did his thing there. Uh, he spent, I think, a whole day there, maybe more. I took a bus from Brock to Roger. I know you were there long enough to get all the different light angles of the sun that day. <laughs> I did. did I? Here's some of their new power. Yeah. This is what we went up there for in the early part of this millennial to shoot because it was getting replaced by the CM. That's right. How things change. Yeah. Look at that thing. That's not, is it? Yeah. I like that picture a lot. These were fun to process. It's always fun processing these slides, That's watching right. them come to life. The information is all there in the slides. That's, it makes you fall in love with film all over again. That's right. You, uh, you just do. Here you go. Now, I think we're going to take a couple more shots. This light is starting to get into kind of a storm light mode here later in the day. Uh -huh. That little critter, we'll get a close-up of him in a minute. Here's your storm light. Oh, boy. Oh. You know, rejected on account of blocking subjects in the foreground. Sorry, just making a joke there, John. All right, here we go. Look at that guy. Number 233, I think he was. Yeah. Here we are. Nice wooden car, kept looking really nice. Same with that one. I don't know, these might be saved. I don't know, they might be preserved. Somebody can tell us later. That's right. Now we're down for some rarities at the docks. And John's really proud that he got these. These are the Duluth Northeastern steam shots, rare birds. And what when you look at these slides, you could barely make the engines out. I mean, they were so dark. But when you work them through in the digital workflow, they came to life. I mean, even as dingy and old as they are, you really fell in love with these little things. They're little 280s, right, John? I think so, right? Now, here's a Northern Pacific engine here. But we're down on the dock level, down at the docks. Here's a freight coming by on the main. The Griswold sing signal on the right. You see that this is the area that John is at down in Duluth. Here comes the Duluth Northeastern consolidation, right? I think so, yeah. 280. Yeah, probably. One of them is saved in the, in the museum, number 27 or 28. We don't have a picture of that one here. I double checked to make sure. And some of these, you couldn't even see the number on them. He said what, the Duluth Museum? Well, yeah, number 27 or 28, they were both saved. That's good. That's a cool shot right there. You can see the hogger. And you see the flowers of uh, September as well, the brown-eyed Susans. Yeah. This is my favorite shot you got of the Duluth Northeastern right here. That's and cool. that was a very dingy slide. It came back to life. Uh -huh. And I really like that shot a lot. Yeah. From the other side, yeah. You could just walk around; nobody bothered you. 
Nobody. <laughs> yeah, never. Nobody ever usually bothers me. Yeah, here he drops his fire. Yeah, it really is. We like that one, remember? Yeah, we do. That's a cool shot. So we're going to move on from the Duluth Northeastern to just some, well, after we see the roundhouse shot, we're going to see some general dock shots. There's a boat there. It looks like he's empty, getting ready to be loaded based on how far out of the water he is. I could be wrong. You can see the water line. I'm going to zoom in on this. See the water line, John? Yeah, yeah. So I think he's ready to be loaded. Probably. Now here's some Duluth, Masabi, and Iron Range engines down on the docks. Uh -huh. And they were working the docks. These are cool little engines, too. Uh -huh. As much as you like those big ones up at Proctor, I like these. Uh-huh. Well, I don't figure them. Here's another DM and IR engine. And there they are working the docks. Oh, the storm light in the gas station, right? Right where you were standing. Yeah. Standard oil. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Yeah. John D. Yeah. And on the right, there is a sign for the billboard I'm talking about. That sign right there for Greenbelt Premium, right uh -huh. there. One of Wisconsin's, or one of the, uh, I think Wisconsin's breweries. It could be. Yeah. Your stored power. Uh -huh. But Here's the newfangled power the Great Northern was using around there. One, yeah. one more shot. And then we're looking at some snow fighting equipment. Uh -huh. I think this might still be in use by BNSF. I don't know. It I, could be. It looks pretty modern. It does. It's yeah. a phalanger spreader, I mean. Uh -huh. One more overview of some yard shots for the folks that weren't born uh -huh. in the era that we were. Those are boxcars. And that's what all railroads had, and they were everywhere you looked in all yards. Uh -huh. That's right. <clears throat> John, you want to tell them how you got this shot? This is his last shot at Duluth. He's getting ready to get the Northern Pacific train back to the Twin Cities, and he's in the depot, and he sees this engine. It's on display, so he sets his camera on the table. You see the table in the foreground? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, but nobody's there. Well, you got the exposure. You nailed it. You like it? Yeah, you did. Good. The W V Crooks, whatever it is. And it's probably saved today, I'm sure. I gotta go to that museum. I've never been there. Uh, all right, here you are in the Empire Building coming back home, back to working your way back home, leaving the Twin Cities next morning. For those of you that want to know where this is, look at that signal on the right there. That number board probably is close to the same mileage as today on the BNSF mile marker 220, and Mike Juhas and I surmise that might be Glen Haven, Wisconsin. So I don't know that for fact, but here he is coming into Cicero, going through Cicero, uh -huh. and I think that's the belt ahead of you, for crossing uh, over you. And then when he gets into Union Station, he's got some time to kill before he catches the Pensy train. What train are you riding home on? Pensy? Admiral. The Admiral. So that's going to be like a, the third highest ranking train in the blue ribbon. It could be. It yeah. could be. Behind the, you know, the Broadway Limited, the General. That's right. right. Yeah. It was, and it was a name train. Yeah. And it was a part of the blue ribbon fleet. Well, anyway, the, the CTA was not the red line yet. And it was, there was no Dan Ryan yet. Uh, so this is how they went south, out of the loop. And so John grabbed a few scenes of activity i think this we think this well i'm going to show you you those, see right there right. those are rebuild street cars there. i know see that that's ogden avenue and yeah. route 66 well maybe not ogden avenue but it's it's uh what would be later known as you know route 34 would be rerouted but i think they shared this route here this might have been roosevelt road i don't know, I don't know. maybe somebody in our audience will know all right, here's your construction of the Dan Ryan and of the red line going south. The John has walked across the bridge, and the L, the, the CTA is over on the other side there, I believe. Am I right? Because this is a morning. Yeah. 
I well, I'm thinking here. I'm thinking. Th yeah, this is a morning shot, and so therefore he walked across the bridge to get this. Those are the supports that will lead to the walkways to the bridge for the future riders that That's are still right. in place today. You see the platform down there uh -huh. being built. And all that empty space on the left and on the other side, well, that's both sides of the Dan Ryan today. Oh. Another view. Look at Dan Ryan traffic. Not hard to get down. It wasn't even called Dan Ryan. There was no I-94 then. A lot of cars. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was called then. That might have been Western Avenue. Oh, no, it wasn't Western Avenue. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to look, at, look at maps later. But Waiting to get his train to go home. Those are ex Charlie, ex subway Charlie cars. Saint they're Louis, ex Charlie cars. St. Louis Car Company, right? Yeah, they're built from Charlie cars. So this is technically the last photo on his journey, on his travel log, because he is close to home and getting very tired and running out of film. Might even be his last roll of film. Saved it for the steam engine shot <laughs> at uh, Harrisburg. Uh, Harrisburg. That's early right. in the morning and it turned out pretty good another very dingy old slide that was able to come back to life yeah i'm and, on the admiral here i think yeah and you're looking out the window of a car too so it's you know got all that going on but you see that's engine 426 uh -huh. really hard to read that pensy gold leaf lettering in on slides so we conclude our show ladies and gentlemen with just a few scenes from the following weekend when John got back home and got decompressed on the 27th. Decompressed. He, decompressed from his long ride. He went back to his territory and just shot a few images. And while we roll through these, we would like to take the opportunity to thank everybody for tuning in today and yeah. later on when they watch it on uh, the YouTube. And uh, gosh, it's been a pleasure putting this show together. Epic indeed. Let me tell you, my butt's sore from sitting here so long. Why don't you scratch it a little bit? Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. But. This is the last picture we're going to show you tonight. And you see the uh, Atlantic out there and uh, South Amboy and the power getting looped back at home in the summer of 1957. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We really thank appreciate you. it. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. And thank you, John. What a fantastic program. Let's, uh, let's open up the floor for questions. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Terrific show. Uh, can I ask what's going to happen to the slide collection? Um, is there is this going to an archive or museum? What's it's what's the future? The John Jepko Living Trust will have the slides, and there is a chain of uh, future. And uh, we're you know in due course we'll talk about more about that. But there is uh, his collection is presently housed in Madison in one place and. Uh, uh, we estimate there to be about maybe 300,000 plus slides. So <laughs> it's going to be a big undertaking, but. Uh, uh, hey, right. Is that an Alco? That you're in the second one. Yeah, uh, that's a 5,700. Yeah, that is an Alco. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyway, back to the question. Um, no, no, nothing. We're just keeping the collection together right now. And uh, that's right. John knows that it's being worked on and. And uh, that's where we're, we're leaving we, it right We now. have a, a lot of trustees working on it. That is the long-winded answer to that question. Any other questions? Well, thank you. I'll just also say I've enjoyed over the years checking out the uh, Godfather of the Rails website. Well, thank and, you very uh, much. I, but I, I stopped checking it several years ago um, when it looked like there were no further updates. And uh, I just checked it again. And I guess maybe you've moved on to another. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Let website or what, what's the status of yeah. that? Hey, good question. It's a really a great question. Uh, frankly, the website started to become a little laborious to continue working with because the technology changed. And the hours that I had to spend to create every update, every update, uh, it was just getting to be too much. So I suspended the uh, updates. However, I kept the data, the uh, the data alive, uh, and my partner with the website, Ryan Wilkerson, out in Sacramento, who helped me build my site, HeartlandRails.com, which is also in a hiatus right now. Uh, it, Ryan and I are working uh, on 
down the line, we're going to revamp and uh, create another, uh, call it a newer version. Well, this one will continue, the, the original Godfather Rails will continue to exist uh, as a database, but we'll be able to upload larger pictures and maybe videos and do more, more functionality in, in putting the updates together. It was a lot of work. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how much of work it was to just do a seven or eight slide update and then mail it out to a, a mailing list. So thank you for checking in. And I would ask everybody to, you know, continue checking in. We'll send an email blast out to the mailing list if, there, if <laughs> when and if, and plus John's on Facebook right now as well. And uh, I helped John maintain his Facebook page. And uh, so between Facebook and railpictures.net, uh, and godfatherrails.com he's pretty well covered and i would like to quickly add too that john was all, always pro um showing his pictures to in, in in the new format in the new media that came into existence yeah gloria. he didn't give me any resistance and gloria his wife that passed away from pac pancreatic cancer uh, always urged him to show his pictures and so yeah. when i suggested to him hey what if we put a, a website together uh years ago he was all for it and then when we decided what we were going to call it i said well nobody will ever be able to figure out jebco that's a ukrainian name it's spelled crazy and how about we just call it godfather rails since that's what we call you when we say bring a box of golden oldies over to the slideshow tonight i could be sued by fireman uh, no, no, no. uh, anyway so that's why we do it it's just godfatherrails.com easier way to remember Hey Ray, for the next question, maybe you want to aim the uh, aim the camera over so we can see John again. Oh yeah, let me yeah. do that. Yeah, thank you. Any I'm other gonna... anything else for for John or Ray? Yeah, I I have a question. Um, Jersey guy talking to another Jersey guy, and thank you so much for this. By the way, um, did John ever shoot any motion picture film? We're gonna get the camera ready. John, you can answer that while I do that. What's that? Did you ever shoot any motion picture film? No, no. Okay, let me make the camera active here. Uh, oh, I see what I'm doing. See, I'm sitting next to John in his bed in his room here. I'm at Capital Lakes with John. By the way, the folks here at Capital Lakes give John excellent, excellent. Beautiful place. He loves it here. This is his home. Sorry for that. My, my new home. Yeah, this, this, is, home right? this is his home away from home. And uh, can you see John all right? He's laying in his comfortable bed. Yep. He gets excellent care here. Um, he's, he's, you know, what can I say? They all love him here. They know about his notoriety and uh, they treat him like uh, the, the celebrity that he is. Don't they, John? I know what I'll be doing this. Huh? Not too busy. <laughs> they don't bother him too much. <laughs> now, there's, uh, there's several of the help that have become, you know, really interested in knowing about John's photos and stuff. Uh, it's really fun telling them about. What's the big M? That's just the place. That's you right there. Yeah. yeah, they got a picture of me, right? Yeah, they're looking at you. Wave to them. There you go. Well, thank you for including the great coverage of Portland, Oregon. Um, oh, well, thank you. What's that? That's, that's where I grew up. Portland. And uh, actually, you have a couple of shots in there that uh i've never seen wondered about um one you caught one of the old electric freight motors for portland traction and uh knowing that you were there in 1957 that sort of answers the question how long those stayed on the property well I after have a that after that railroad got their uh two sw1s i have a question for you i can't see you but what's your name I'm Mike Burns in Portland, Oregon. Mike, thanks for watching tonight. I'll tell you what, um, hook up with us later on so that maybe we can get some answers to questions we have about where John's shots were taken at on that little run by that we did. Yeah, I'm not positive on that. Yeah, I know you had put up a thrown up a map there, um, actually, of the old city streetcar system, which had shut down in 1950. Um, and so what John rode was the old inner urban which was standard gauge versus the uh, mostly narrow gauge streetcars and so he started out actually south of portland in oregon city 
Oh, and no. uh, and Sorry. then you headed up into uh, East Portland, and he actually had to get off the car and get on a bus because um, just uh, I think the year before, um, the bridge had been worked on and they uh, did not maintain the rails. Um, actually, this it's a good little intro. The the CERA show uh, later this month by Harvey Lehner has a new film and uh, lots of coverage of Portland. So lots of motion picture film of that same same area. But uh, wow, um, yeah, do, you got some oh, nice shots. Man. Yeah, that's uh, April 8th. So the CERA websites of Zoom show open to the public. I'll check that out. Thank you. And thank you for that information. It's going to be really helpful. Uh, you, you wouldn't believe how much information you just took sorry your audio is fading out unhelpful from people i got one from a guy who saw a virginian diesel that john took a picture of in 50 and not was not in the show tonight but it was part of copy of that and uh there is a friend of john's who grew up in a house that you hey ray field ray um you're having some issues with your audio there maybe some connectivity issues uh that might be possible we are in a band with a challenge to place here that's cool you know you, yeah, just, it... you just want to try try it again then please yeah i'll speak slowly too uh, just to say that um, I lost my train of thought here too. What we were talking about, but uh, uh, oh yeah, the, the fact that the internet helps John identify locations that he didn't label as to when he took That's the right, pictures. That does. It's a really a big help. So over the it years, I Google a lot. Yep, coming up in the years coming up, uh, this is going to be a really good way for. And this is what this it's fun being a detective when you're a historian. It's so much fun being a detective. How many of you have gone to Google satellite views to look at the scorched earth of where roundhouses and yards used to be? Columbus, Ohio, Pennsylvania Railroad, do that. That's what John was in 1956, and it's scorched earth now. Interstate. Highway, yeah. anything. But I, I mean, th that's what's great earth? about sharing information. How do you, you scorch the earth? Yeah, and, and also with social media. Yeah, and I'll just also mention, you were, John was mentioning the train of tomorrow, and you're talking about leaving portland going north to tacoma uh, so that i think as as you recognize later those shots that you included of the great northern those look like shots of the empire builder heading north out of seattle um, right. and john was talking about the train of tomorrow which was purchased by the union pacific and that was used uh, as one of the pool trains between portland and seattle and actually uh, the northern the northern pacific and great northern each operated their own train in that pool. And uh, so the hill lines very much did get into Portland. Um, actually, the uh, Terminal Railroad for Portland Union Station at the time was called the Northern Pacific Terminal Company of Oregon. So, well, um, you know, that's that's interesting. We, we got the story when we went to the convention in Portland a few years ago. We rode out to Astoria, the RDC ride. And they were telling us the story of the hill expansion and how Southern Pacific Harriman and folks did not, or whoever Southern Pacific was headed by, uh, they did not want them into Portland. And so that was that Portland company you're talking about, I think, was their way to do that, uh, to Northern Pacific anyway. But appreciate the history and the background. Yeah, thank you. 